Welcome back to the OCAD U Sports Report. My name is Avishai Sol. I am your host. And we have had another big week in the world of sports. We still got Olympics going on. We got NBA All-Star stuff, hockey trades, women's soccer tournaments. But before we get to that, quick snack. We have a lot to get to this week in the world of sports. Let's get started. First, in the world of UFC fighting, middleweight champion and superstar Israel Adesanya defeats Robert Whitaker in their second match. Adesanya defends his middleweight title. The match went five rounds and ended with a unanimous decision in favor of Adesanya. Remember, this is his first fight since he lost to John Blachowicz trying to move up into the light heavyweight division, but good to see him defending it here. Next, in NHL, the Montreal Canadiens trade Tyler Toffoli. Not a huge trade, but a notable name in the sport. Keeping with the cold sports, we're going to move right now to the Olympics, where some bad news for Canadians. Curler Brad Gushu lost to Sweden and will now have to face the U.S. for the bronze medal. It sucks, I know, but also, like... Hurling. But some good news in Canadians women's hockey, they won the gold, as they should, reclaiming it from the U.S., big win for the country and for the sport. But I think it's important we need to remember these players, right? We are all proud of our hockey teams, we're all very proud of our women's hockey teams, but I think the biggest barrier between being proud of a sport and knowing the players and creating stars is just that knowing their names. We've had some really great players on this gold medal team. That's how we create stars. So first, Sudbury's Rebecca Johnston, who has now won her third Olympic gold medal. Mary Philip Poulin, she became the only hockey player ever, male or female, to score in four Olympic gold medal games. Other members of the team, we got Emily Clark, Melody Daus, Sarah Fillier, Brianne Jenner, Emma Maltese, Sarah Nurse, Jamie Lee Retre, Jillian Saunier, Natalie Spooner, Laura Stacy, and Blair Turnbull. It's important to remember not just that the team won, but who was on that team. Next, in some football news. Well, I know the Super Bowl was already a week ago, but I just want to very quickly recap, of course the Rams beat the Bengals, which makes me sad. My mom was born in Cincinnati and anything that beats LA is good in my book. But the halftime show, the halftime show was awesome. For those who don't know, we had some hip hop giants. Dr. Dre, Snoop Dogg, 50 Cent, Kendrick Lamar, Eminem, and Mary J. Blige. It was one for the ages. And what I noticed also, anybody born between like 1980 and 90, felt the same way in that, you know, the Super Bowl halftime show, for years they were doing like Wings and the Rolling Stones. They were doing Stars of Yesteryear, shows for old people. And now they're finally doing one for us. And that's when those people realized that they are now the old people. Next in some NBA news, we have All-Star Weekend just passed, going over what you missed. On Friday, we have the Celebrity game where people like Machine Gun Kelly and Quavo play against Tiffany Haddish and Jack Harlow. It's crazy circus of a basketball game. Then later that night we have the Rising Stars game which is essentially an all-star game but it's reserved for rookie and sophomore players only. Both Raptors Scotty Barnes and Precious Achua will be competing in that game. Then we move on to Saturday we have the skills contest where we have three teams now. We have the Cavaliers versus the rookies versus the Antetokounmpo's. The what? It's the Antetokounmpo brothers. We have Giannis Antetokounmpo, we all know him, he's the MVP. We have Thanasis Antetokounmpo who is Giannis's older brother but little brother and we have Alex Antetokounmpo, the youngest brother, who is making his NBA debut through the skills competition. It'll be hilarious just to watch. Then we got the three-point contest, where Raptors' Fred Van Vliet will compete. Then the dunk contest, of course. And then Sunday, we have the big game. We have 
Team Durant, where the starters are Kevin Durant, who's injured and will be replaced by Jason Tatum. Then Joel Embiid, John Morant, Andrew Wiggins, and Trey Young. The reserves on that team, LaMelo Ball, Devin Booker, Rudy Gobert, Zach Levine, Chris Middleton, first-timer DeJounte Murray, Carl Anthony Towns, joined by Draymond Green from the Warriors. That's a pretty good team. And if you're thinking that right now, just wait till you hear the names from Team LeBron. For the starters are Giannis Antetokounmpo, Stephen Curry, DeMar DeRozan, LeBron James, and Nikola Jokic. The reserves are... First-time All-Star and Cleveland Cavalier, Jared Allen, Jimmy Butler, Luka Doncic, another first-timer and Cavalier, Darius Garland, James Harden, Donovan Mitchell from the Utah Jazz, Chris Paul from the Phoenix Suns, and Raptors own Fred Van Vliet. We'll all be excited to see him in the game, even though he can't dunk, so we won't see any dunks, but he'll play well. He's there, that's what's important. Next, in a little bit of soccer news, the Canadian women's team tied the English in the Arnold Clark Cup. Always good to play a good game against a team as strong as the English. They're always one of the better teams in the world, but so are the Canadians, growing popularity of the sport there. But for our main segment today, I wanted to talk a little bit less about the prestige of the professional leagues and more about sort of the stuff on the ground level. As we move further away from the peak of COVID-19, rec leagues and pickup games are starting to become more prevalent. They're starting to open up. We're starting to get back out there playing the sports we love. And as we do, we'll start to see some familiar characters. What do I mean by that? It doesn't matter what sport you play, whether it's pickup soccer, pickup basketball, shinny, whether you're a tennis player, maybe you're going to your local tennis court and throwing around with somebody, I don't know. But whatever it is, there are certain archetypes in those pickup games. Let me tell you about a few of them. First, we have the old guy. This guy doesn't move very fast, may not be that great, but he's been playing the game for so long that he is always in the right spot. He doesn't make any dumb mistakes, doesn't screw up anything. We have the athletic guy, somebody whose body is faster than his brain. He'll, he'll run, he'll jump, and he'll be out of control. We have the ball hog, who will occasionally do something spectacular, but only like one out of ten times. We have the specialist. This guy can do one thing really, really well, but not much else. We have the guy who's off today. You'll often hear him saying, man, I'm off today, implying that there are some days where he's on, but we'll never know. We have the out of shape guy, who may be a good player, but he gets winded too quick to tell. We have the guy who takes it too seriously, the player coach, if you will, starts calling out advanced mechanics and plays. Like, listen, we're just trying to play, guy. This, we're, this isn't the pros. We have the rage monster. This is probably my least favorite. He's sort of a spin-off of the person who takes it too seriously, except instead of taking out his frustrations on the strategies of his teammates, it's more on the... <laughs> we have the guy who isn't very good, but tries very hard. This is, this is unfortunately me. And finally, we have the brothers. These people, whether they're related by, by blood, they have a previously built relationship, and you know that they will only be passing to each other. These archetypes are all ridiculous, and many of us have been many of these archetypes, but it's also part of what makes pickup sports so much fun. It's because you have to deal with the people who take it too seriously, the people who are calling, you know, BS fouls all the time, the people who are really skilled but have a gut from COVID. It's part of what makes it so colorful and so much fun. And we'll finish off this week's episode with our Athlete of the Week. This week's Athlete of the Week is my brother Eli. Eli is 17 years old. He is a senior at North Toronto Collegiate Institute and he just got his wisdom teeth removed. I don't know if any of you have had or know somebody who've had their wisdom teeth removed, but they give you some, some how, how I say, drugs knock you out and Eli was kind enough to provide a video directly after his minor surgery. I'll play that for you now. He's fine now but what a trooper. Not as many teeth as he used to have which means I can do this more effectively than he can. This has been the OKU Sports Report. My name is Abby Sarsol, and I'll see you all next week.